Well, I was concentrating on a solo career then. I had been for about two years. So I've made the record Kitty J. And when the Mercury Prize was nominated, I guess, uh, you know, I was able to make a, a career out of what I was doing. And the record started selling. Um, so it meant I could make money, pay the musicians who took part. Myself and my brother could, I don't know, just live, really. And uh, we could get gigs. And so we took the tour a good three weeks on the back of that, the nomination, uh, which brought some, some money in and gave me confidence as an artist to, to write another record, which I did with Freedom Field. So um, I think it was important because it was an experiment as a, stylistically, as an idea, you know, of, of Dartmoor legend stories and then sticking out with this kind of bizarre instrumentation of fiddle stomping and singing and a tenor guitar, which is quite strange sound anyway, it's quite driving. And I think what it did, it just gave me that confidence to, to carry it forward. Me and Sean came up with that idea, you know, to, 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 to tribal almost. Warlike? Yeah, absolutely. And that was the whole thing, because the Hurlis Stones, Young Men Turned to Stone, dramatic story there. And we weren't sure about putting it as track number one, because it was quite a step forward. And, People who have heard our music before might be used to polite um, acoustic instruments, you know, and, and kind of easing into a song rather than something so immediate yeah. and aggressive, let's say. It's very fiddle driven again, it's one of those songs, the hurlers. It's quite Kitty J like or Lady of the Sea. Well, Kitty J and Bold Knight like it. Come on, make your choice. And he said, Oh, you heard the boys. Come on, make your choice. I think people are interested to find out what this kind of folk music is trying to say. I think because it is quite urgent and, and there's a lot of rhythms going on and we, we, we try and play in a stand-up audience all the time um, and it's quite immediate. I guess it sits maybe in a, in a pocket on its own sometimes, you know. I mean, I, I don't think it does all the time because it definitely is folk music. There's no doubt in my mind because of what I'm trying to do and where I've come from. But we stray into this kind of rocky, this, uh, some people even say punky sometimes, which is bizarre, or indie folk, I'm not quite sure what the hell it is, but uh, I think because of the energy involved, that is something that maybe, you know, young people, um, you know, are getting, getting into. I guess it's pushing boundaries, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. And I think Poor Man's Heaven is trying to do that. I mean, when, you know, when we introduced uh, Andy Tween, um, I mean, Cormac Byrne, this amazing percussionist that we've worked with before, uh, he's still on this record, but because of the live work that we've done in the past 18 months, you know, Andy Tween, the drummer, he's a really heavy weight, really anchors everything together. Him and Ben are, you know, right at the heart of everything. Uh, it's like a train moving along. It doesn't move, you know, he, and he's, because he's not from folk music or anything like that, that I think we're starting to stray in this other rockier, heavier, weightier area. And I think that's, um, it's really exciting for us and, and it probably relates live and recording they're, they're pushing together I think as a unified sound more so on this record than let's say Freedom, Freedom Fields yeah. which had a lot of ball ballads and things like that which we wouldn't let necessarily do live and there's songs like um, Feather in a Storm and Crimson Dawn which are very much studio tracks and the design who created myself and my brother Sean um, have created them in a studio environment. Right. Uh, whereas the Poor Man's Heaven, the sound of the drums, um, Green Gold, which is just a live take anyway. I mean, there's a song, Green and Gold, which we're really proud of, which is just myself, Ben Nichols, double bass, and Andy Tween on drums. And it's a two in, two in the morning kind of sat down in a studio in Cornwall, Airfield Studios, where we spent two or three weeks. And we just, we took one take of this song, Green and Gold. And it's a very dark, ghostly story, you know, and, and it, it it's quite brave, I think, of the way me and Sean let that, let that go and make the record, because we've never done that before. We're quite perfectionists when it comes to producing. We like things to sound, um, uh, you know, we like them to be the uh, best they can be, you know. And Green Gold has got a lot of edge to it, but it, it surprised us the way that song went, because it's actually got the most character out of all of them. So, I mean, in, in a way, I think, um, it, it's kind of, it, it's given me, for the next project, I mean, I, I shouldn't really think about it now, but I'd, I'd like to, but the next project is kind of, that's where I'd like to do it, is really strip it right back 
and, and just make a record like in two weeks.